Why does everything always happen when I leave town? <laughs> then all the drama happens at the camp when I am away. Let me show you what happened while I was gone. Okay, look closely. There is something in my kitchen that is out of place. Do you see it? Are you used to my channel? If you're not used to my channel, I live out here in the wilderness in the summer months. And um, I have left for two weekends. I didn't was not here. And uh, last weekend was the, the weekend that I left. I actually left Colorado and I was in California and enjoying time with family. But uh, while I was away, there was an animal in my camp. Okay, let's take a look, a little closer look to see what this animal did. Yeah, I already looked at it because I walked into the kitchen immediately. I was like, whoa, um, this has never been disturbed the entire two years I've been here. So this is the first time that this bear bin has been disturbed. And if you don't know what a bear bin is, I will uh, link it up here so that way you can see it. It prevents bears from getting into my food. So what I do is I store my food in this bin that looks very similar to just a trash can. And, uh, and it's really thick so the bear can't get in. Um, there was no food in this bear bin while I was gone. Not one thing of food. Let me show you. Okay, I think this is kind of be kind of a little hard to film because you probably can't see it as much on the camera. Um, but you'll see, and I'm just going to show you every mark that's on here and you can give me your idea of what animal this might be. I have my idea as well. So there's a tooth mark or a claw mark right there. Uh, there's another claw mark that came down into the, um, the sticker here. Um, so it looks like they didn't put a lot of pressure here, but they were moving things around. There's another claw mark right here. And then, um, let's see here. I'm going to try to get it. They moved it all around. Now let me show you what I did here. I have chained it. I actually changed it so humans wouldn't take it. Because this bin, I think, cost me like $170. And um, I didn't want somebody to steal it. But I also thought about if a bear were to try to get at it, they can't just pick it up and roll it around and jump on it. They have to do it here at the camp. And uh, let me put it up on, on end, and then you can see the, the teeth marks. I'd love to know if you have a different idea. Okay, let's take a look at these teeth marks in here. Um, they seem a little smaller than what I would think if it was a bear. However, um, I know how thick this is, and that animal that can chew through this um, has a pretty good, pretty good bite. I don't think it's a dog, you guys. I really don't think it's a dog. I don't think it's a mountain lion. Um, there's another one up here. You can see there's another tooth mark. Here's another punctured tooth mark here. Um, they're kind of sporadically around it um, as the I'm gonna I'm gonna say bear so if you think it's something else you know hey let me know but I'm gonna say bear this says bear to me all over it and um, here's a here's another one down here again I'm not sure if you can see that there it is again so I'm gonna go really slow and you can get your idea of what animal you think that might be and um, I don't know, that's I'm trying to give you a perspective of, of size. Um, yeah, so they didn't try too hard. It's like they tried to open it and it wouldn't open and they must have moved on. Now I've been gone away from the tent for, I think now it's been seven days that I have been away from my tent. So the, the tracks are very limited and I ran around and to see anything that I could see and I, I just didn't see any tracks anywhere because it has rained and everything so the tracks are gone. Let me open this and you can see what was inside it. 
Okay, to, to open my bear bin, this is what makes a bear proof as well, is that you gotta, you gotta turn it, and that's what opens the bear bin. If you see my channel, you see me doing this a lot. This, this is where I store all my food. So, now it's open. I wanna give you an idea on the thickness here. Look how thick that is. And this stuff is strong, like really, really strong. So, um, and they did puncture all the way through um, up here. Do you see that? They punctured all the way through. So it, it, it did protect my food, it did its job. You know, I'm pretty impressed with this. Um, this bear bin is, uh, I've had, I had to look up the, the name, it's a barracuda. So, again, uh, they weren't able to get in, but now I might have leaks inside my bear bin because I got all these holes in it. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna patch them up somehow. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'll find something to patch these things up. Let's see what's inside the bear bin so you can see what the bear wanted. Okay, inside my bear bin, I have my stove. This is my stove, there's nothing in it. Um, it's pretty clean, so I clean it every time I put it in there. Uh, what I've been wanting to do is, I, or what I planned on doing is I clean it with uh, Windex because uh, Windex um, has ammonia in it and bears don't like ammonia. However, the last three times I didn't use Windex and I cooked bacon and I just, I use water only to clean it. So, um, yep, yeah, that's what I did. Okay, next thing that I have in there is I have my pots and pans. Um, these are these are all clean, but they're clean by water only. Um, I have a little bit of soap if I can't get it off, but most of the time it's just boiled water is what I clean these off with. So that's what I have in there. This is a, this is a tarp. I have a tarp in here. This tarp um, goes over my um, oh. The tarp goes over my um, kitchen area to keep me dry, so the bear wouldn't want a tarp. And uh, I have some spoons and such, all my spoons that my subscribers gave me, so nice. So I got a whole bag of spoons. And then I'm just gonna kinda show you inside, we don't need to see everything in there. I have some Windex, so this was the Windex wipes that I was using, um, but they kinda dried out, so I stopped using them. And um, I have my, got my other spoon too. I mean, I just, there's, there's no food. There's no food in here. It's just uh, remnants of food and pots and pans and stuff that I've used to cook on. So, it's a good thing that I started storing my stove in my bear bin. Because, um, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why don't you store your stove in your bin, which is not bear proof. Um, and I knew better, you know, I knew better. I knew if I'm cooking on something, the bears are gonna want it. So the bear wanted it. Now, um, I knew there was a lot of bear activity, and if you've seen a lot of my videos lately, I've been talking about bears a bit. Uh, there's a lot of bear activity in this area, and we have a, um, oh, like a social media thing here in, in my area that everybody communicates on, and I have seen a ton of bears. So this year, I was a little worried about a bear um, in fact, sometimes I've stayed out here by myself and I decided not to uh, without Rocky. Uh, Rocky's with me. Come here, Rox. Come here, you guys can see what he looks like. He looks like a bear, don't you? Come here, babies. Oh, yeah. See you? Oh, let's see you. Here's my Rockies. Here's my baby. He's my little bear. He's just a tiny bear. Um, so he is with me here. Um, because, um, or oh, sometimes, because I was, I didn't want to be here alone without him here because I just had that feeling. You know when you just have that gut feeling like you're getting watched or there's something around or, you know, so I, I've had him with me. Um, so very rarely, um, especially this fall, have I had him not with me. So I think that's good. And I did have a scare at the tent one night, um, and I did talk about that. So, um... It, it can be kind of scary being here, you know, and they come down from um, the higher mountain area and they come down here during the fall because people leave their trash out because I am kind of in a residential area as well. A lot of campers around here and they leave their trash out. So in the fall, they come down here every year and they kind of tour around the trash can. So I'm thinking what the bear thought was that was a trash can, which uh, 
let's just face it, it is a trash can, you know what I mean? It's just an expensive trash can. Um, so I think the bear was just trying to open it like he was opening everybody else's trash cans because a lot of people here in this area do not have bear proof trash cans. Um, which is, I think, not good and I think it should be a law that they have that, but I'm not the one that sets that law. <laughs> but I'm the one sleeping in a tent and they're sleeping in cabins. Um, so anyways, anyways, that's beside the point. Um, I did some research on, on bear behavior and I've done research a long time, a long time ago too. And I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about bear behavior. If you want to learn a little bit more, st you know, stay on and I'll, and I'll kind of talk about bears behaviors and you guys can, um, can uh, listen to that. I have pictures of bears that are in my neighborhood that I'd like to show you so you can see the kind of bears that are within you know, probably one to three miles of my property. Um, our area here is, is actually kind of small, so they're they're pretty close. So I am carrying around bear spray now, even on my property. So you'll see, if you haven't noticed, is that I have bear spray on currently right now. If you can see it, I don't know, I can't see my screen, so hopefully you can see that. Um, I have my little knife on me, that's not gonna do me any good. <laughs> I gotta go get my big knife, but that one I just had, so I just stuck it on. Um, I also have Rocky here, but honestly, um, Rocky can't, he can't defeat a bear. You know, I'm aware of that, you know, the, but he could scare off a bear uh, with his barking and stuff. Uh, neighbors have talked about it when they're dark, the dogs start to bark, uh, the bear runs away. So I'm sure that if he were to see a, a bear, he'd start barking and scare off the bear. Do you want to hear about bears? Let's hear about bears. I think it could help you anyways, you know? You might not be in a bear area, but if you ever are, uh, this is some good information to know. So um, let, me, let me start talking about bears and I'm gonna show you again some pictures of bears. So I'm gonna talk about black bear because, well, that's, that's what's in my area is black bear. I don't hike around a lot of areas that have grizzly bear. Actually, not too many. Now, could a grizzly bear be in Colorado? It's possible. It is, it's possible, but um, really it's, it's very rare if that ends up happening. During the fall, which is where I'm at right now, the bear eats about 20 hours a day. They have to increase their body weight by 35%. Um, and they do this by excessive eating. They are constantly eating. Um, they also remember food sources, which I'm really happy that they didn't find any food in my, uh, well, they didn't find any food in my bin, but let me, show you what they did find in my property and they ate. Okay, you remember those green tomatoes? <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I should have known, I should have known, should have known the bears ate the green tomatoes. Uh, the deers don't like them. The deers ate around and um, but the bears ate the tomatoes. And this, again, is my opinion. I do not have a trail cam directly on my garden. I did not have a trail cam on my bear bin. Um, I've been so focused, if you've been watching my videos, I've been so focused on my tent and um, putting all my video cameras on my tent because I've been having squirrel problems on my tent and I was wondering how they were getting in. So I took all of my trail cams and pointed it to my tent. And this was the one time that I could have captured a bear. Anyways, the problem with this is that um, they see my house, my land, as food now. They remember, it's part of what they're programmed to do, they remember where the food is. So they did come to my property, and again, assuming it's a bear, they came to my property and they found food. And they found um, two tomatoes. And um, this is definitely, the tomatoes were like, eaten right off like there is no evidence of a tomato anywhere they ate the entire thing um, so that concerns me a little bit so I need to think about my garden again and uh, maybe next year I don't do a garden or maybe I maybe I what I grow was stuff that the bear didn't eat they didn't eat my my herbs well they eat my basil <laughs> but they didn't eat my oregano and they didn't eat my mint um, so maybe maybe I just grow that here so the areas that the bear likes to live in is a forest, um, the edge of the forest, um, and some forest clearings. However, I have a friend that lives in New Mexico and she has some property out there and she was talking about how they had bear problems and where she was at was a desert. And I was really shocked that she had a black bear in her area. 
Um, however, there are, again, a lot of people there and there's some food there, so I think that might be the reason why the bear was in the desert at that time. Uh, bears also, let's talk a little bit about their claws. Um, you might think that uh, the grizzly claw is sharper than the black bear claw, but that's not the case. Um, it's because the black bears climb trees. Uh, so if you think you can get away from a black bear if I climb in a tree, that's, that's not going to happen. They can climb trees like a cat can climb trees. It, they have very sharp claws compared to the grizzly bear. Not to say that the grizzly bear doesn't have any sharp claws, it's just the black bear is, um, is sharper. Um, they they uh, dig in the ground a lot more, they eat roots and, and such, and so they have sharper claws to get through and to climb. So in my area, you see a lot of female bears, and I hope that I can get permission to use the, the pictures here, so hopefully you can see them. If not, I'll choose pictures that I can find online that look very similar to the bears in my area. Um, there's a couple females that come through this area um, with their cubs, and uh, just so you know, a female bear only breeds about every other year and they have about six nipples and they can have two to five cubs. Rocky, just lay down. <laughs> Rocky's like going in circles. He smells the, he smells the bear. I know he does. He can smell it. Um, okay, back to bears and cubs. So a cub, let's see, a cub is born in January and February. Um, and they are blind when they're born. They're kind of like, they remind me of like kittens, you know. Um, they're extremely small. Uh, they're only like a half a pound to three quarters of a pound, and they're so cute. They're like eight inches long, you know, they're so cute. So anyways, um, they stay with their mom um, all the way until spring, and uh, then they immerse from their den. And um, and maybe I can talk about the dens a little bit. But uh, they emerge from the den in the spring and then the mom teaches them everything that she knows. And they, oh, they stay with their mom for 16 to 18 months. Female bear would only raise about maybe six litters, which honestly, one litter for me was enough. <laughs> I'm not, no more for me. Um, anyways, um, but uh, they also um, have a lifespan of about 18 years, and I think that the longest living bear to record is about 31 years, somewhere around there, um, and I, I think it depends on what your sources are. Uh, speaking of squirrels, uh, the bears and the squirrels actually, they don't get along. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the diet of the bear. The bear eats about 80 to 85 percent plant-based diet, where um, about the remaining 15 percent is um, meat. And so they usually don't go out and hunt, um, but every once in a while they'll do. And what they are hunting is, is like small little rodents. Um, if they can catch a squirrel, they get a squirrel. Um, but uh, they also will dig inside the ground to get the rodent as well. Um, and then they'll also um, get elk calves, uh, moose calves, um, deer um, are they call calves too, a deer, uh, baby deer. <laughs> Um, so they, they, they do hunt a little bit, but not that much. Um, they're more of an opportunist type um, eater. So if the opportunity is there, they'll take it. For, but for the most part, they usually scavenge for bear, berries and such. So in Colorado, um, you'll see, like especially in the foothills of Boulder area, lots and lots of berries, lots and lots of bears. Um, I don't think I've ever seen so much evidence of bears other than California than in um, Boulder, Colorado, and if you hike around that area. Oh, I was saying how the, the squirrels and the bears don't get along, which is makes me kind of wonder because you know how I've been having some squirrel problems here, and I have a ton of squirrels, like a ton of them here. Um, the bears actually raid the squirrel's home, and um, they're, where they plant all their little seeds and stuff, the bears will go over and they'll, they'll eat it. Um, so they're taking, they're taking the food that the squirrels have been working so hard for, which is really interesting because remember how I said I had a ton of squirrels here? Well, actually, I just said that. Um, but today when I pulled up, um, I didn't see one squirrel. Now there's like two squirrels, there's a fly around me. There's like two squirrels around here right now, um, but there was like 15 of them or so. And now I only see two and there was a bear on my property. Hmm. 
So maybe to get rid of the squirrels, I just need to invite a bear on the property. And then how do I get rid of the bear? <laughs> so let's talk about the bear territory. Um, you might be curious of um, how many bears would be in one area. Um, a lot of times I do share and they are sharing in this area. Um, and I'm looking at the pictures, I'm trying to analyze. So you get to see the bear move around this, this neighborhood as everyone's taking pictures and you can see where they're going. I'm gonna turn my camera a little bit because the sun's coming. Oh, the sun's still there. All right, I'm gonna reposition. I'm gonna go somewhere else. All right, I'm sorry about that. The sun was getting in the camera. Okay, so um, female bears, their um, radius, their spot in which they travel, is between about two and uh, 10 miles, square miles. And um, they usually don't share their property, their area, sorry, they don't share their area with other females. However, they can with males as well, but, um, but with other females, they usually don't share. So I've been trying to study the pictures that the people are posting to see, you know, if they have a cub. It's really hard to see in a picture whether or not it's a male or female, but um, if they have a cub with them, you know it's a female. So I am kind of curious at how many females are around this area um, since they don't like to share property. Or I keep saying property. It's like their own property. Um, uh, the male bears, um, they have about 10 to 60 miles um, radius. And that's kind of like their area, their property, their territory. That's the word I'm looking for, their territory. And um, they don't, they do share. They do overlap every now and then because, you know, how can they guard 60 miles, square miles, right? <laughs> but, they, but they do share. So now I am next to my tent. Here's my tent if you haven't seen it before. There is my beautiful tent that I live in in the summer. And yes, I am sitting on the ground because I want to show you some of my fears of having my deck is that a bear is going to decide that underneath this deck is a really nice den that they can make. Um, and I would say about, about every time I come here, I slowly approach the deck and to look to see if there's a bear underneath the deck um, because I think that they would like it. There's no little rocky trying to make a presence <laughs> um, so it is one of my fears is that they will try to hibernate um, underneath my deck now in this area the bears come out in the springtime um, and it depends on how warm it is once it starts getting pretty warm I think this year they came out in March I think it was March that they came out and um, they they kind of leave about um, November, December time. So you usually don't see a lot of pictures around that time um, in this area. Now bears like to hibernate. Um, if you don't, I'm sure you know what hibernation means. The bear heartbeat is about um, 40 to 50 beats per minute. And when they go to hibernate, it's about um, eight beats per minute. Now I was able to see a couple bear bin, or bear bins. <laughs> I got bear bin on my mind. I was able to see a couple bear dens um, when I was in California, but there, very rarely have I ever seen a bear den here in Colorado. Um, I, I actually have searched for them and I haven't really, I think I've seen maybe one and that was like in my 20s. And uh, I'm in my 40s now and I haven't seen one. So they usually go to lower um, elevations to, to hibernate. Um, and I'm gonna guess probably in this area because of I know the, the population of the bears and kind of where they're hanging out. Um, I would say it's about 8,000 feet is kind of where they're hang that where their um, dens are at. And I am at uh, 9,700 feet above sea level. So that gives you kind of an idea. So they come through here and then I think they, if they can, they can get lower. Now the area that I'm in, it's really hard for them to get lower than where I'm at because it's, well, uh, without ever showing you the whole area. Um, I think that they hibernate around this area. They like to hibernate uh, underneath rocks, um, underneath buildings, um, and they also like to hyper hibernate underneath um, broken trees. And um, and uh, you know that when a tree were to fall over and it creates this little um, area, they kind of create this like little nest, and it really does. It looks like a nest. And if I can find a picture of a bear bin, uh, bear den uh, online, I'll, I'll show you. So bears poop a lot. I know I'm talking about poop again, but they poop a lot. And I walked all around my property trying to find bear poop because if there's a bear on my property, there could be some poop on the property and then I'd see what they're eating and, and uh, which way they came in and stuff. But I wasn't able to find that, which makes me a little, 
wondering if it wasn't a bear, but I don't know what else it'd be. Um, that, uh, well, um, during hibernation, since we're talking about hibernation, uh, during hibernation, did you know that a bear does not poop at all? I'm guessing it's not a shock because they don't want to sit in their poop the whole winter, but they, they don't. They don't poop. While I was in my survival training in um, California, which I, I've talked about before, and, and uh, I did a lot of bear tracking at that point. Um, and I, I think I mentioned before that I think the guy that was teaching us survival was obsessed with bears, like literally obsessed with them. So I kind of want to talk about the communication of the bear. So like... Um, when you're hiking along and you see some marks in the tree and what does that mean you know when a bear marks a tree um, they do that for dominance it's the male bears that are doing it and so the highest mark on the tree is the more dominant male in the area basically just marking their spot is what they're doing um, in regards to like communication and such so sometimes you'll watch some some videos of bears and they're kind of like huffing you know what i mean kind of like a I'm kind of thinking it's kind of like a dog. It's all I can associate it with where they're, they're like, <laughs> there, I'm being a bear. <laughs> you know, um, they're kind of doing that kind of a thing. Um, a lot of times that's to, to um, scare away a threat. A lot of times a bear doesn't want to attack you. The, the majority of the time they don't want to attack you. Not to say bear, black bears don't attack. They do attack. Um, but the majority of the time, um, if they see you and they're doing that, they're, they're threatened by you and they want to scare you off so it is best to slowly slowly not run uh, slowly back away from the bear um, when they're doing that you'll see that a bear sometimes will get up on its hind legs um, and a lot of times and again there's debate on this because no one exactly knows um, but what i have read before is that they're doing that so that they can see you better um, it's not exactly a, um, a threat to you when they get up in their hind legs. They're actually trying to check you out. Like, what are you? What are you doing? Um, that, that's not a um, sign of dominance. Now, I've also read that is a sign of dominance, that they're trying to look bigger than you and they want to fight you. So I've read that as well. So what do you do when you see a bear? Um, don't start spraying your bear spray right away. Um, because a lot of times what will happen, you'll spray, spray your bear spray and you're not even close enough to the bear. Um, I've seen it so many times. I actually even saw it on a YouTube video where this girl, she was recording. I don't know how she was recording and spraying at the same time, but, um, she, the bear was like, I don't know, 50 yards away, 50 to a hundred yards away, probably, but maybe more like a hundred yards away. She was on her porch spraying her bear spray. Um, I don't know, and I don't know what direction the wind was going then, but that bear didn't care at all in that video. And in fact, I, when I was watching that video, it kind of aggravated me. <laughs> like, you're wasting all that bear spray. Um, anyways, uh, so she was yelling and spraying the bear spray. Um, what I recommend to do is to make a lot of loud noises. They don't like loud noises. Um, a lot of times when I'm, and I should probably be wearing it right now, um, is a whistle. Um, and, uh, and I don't know why I'm not wearing mine. Should be, where did I put it? Anyways, I'd wear a whistle. And uh, I should be wearing one. Um, but if you have a whistle and make a lot of loud noises, um, that would be um, good as well. Um, a dog barking also kind of scares the bear too. Um, so anything you can do to make some loud noises, most likely, not in every case, but most likely the bear will go away. Um, bears that are more used to people um, tend to not care what you're doing. You know, they don't care. They're looking to see what food you have, what trash you have. So um, my number one request for everyone is to be um, cautious with your food. Know what you're doing. Know what you're cooking. I mean, like the other day here, I was here and I was smelling barbecue. I could smell, I can smell everyone's food that was cooking all around me. And all I was thinking is like, let's just attract the bears a little bit more, you, you know. <laughs> but... Um, you know, just be cautious. If you're camping out there in the wilderness, just be cautious of the bears in the area. Um, if you're going to be using your bear spray, you know, um, know how far your bear spray can spray. You know, don't just start spraying it 100 yards away because when you start to spray that bear spray, you're going to be unloading that thing. So you only got so much time to use it. Um, 
if the bear attacks you um, and uh, makes um, any marks on you and such and you call that in most likely that bear is going to go get killed and so that's what I really want to avoid is a lot of um, bears that are unnecessarily killed um, um, here in Colorado so um, just be very cautious um, bears are getting more and more used to people and we just need to be very protective on it as I edit this video, I feel like I'm not doing you guys justice in regards to being safe with a bear and understanding the true behavior of a black bear. Um, and so I'm just going to add this little section to this video, which is going to talk a little bit about um, the, the fatal accidents and some accidents that have happened here in Colorado. So if this is something that you feel that might be a little too much for you, um, as I will talk a little bit about some details of some bear attacks, um, go ahead and end the video now. I don't want to scare you to get into the back country. Um, there are not a lot of deaths um, due to black bears. In fact, all I could find total in Colorado um, through some of the research that I have done is only five deaths in Colorado. Now, if you're going to be scared of anything, I would probably be scared, more scared to get in your car and uh, give you a perspective on that. In 2017, there was 630 deaths in Colorado due to car accidents. This first story I'm going to tell you about, I actually just learned about recently as I was talking with some friends. And it was like a friend that knows somebody that knows somebody who was killed by a bear here in Colorado. The first story I'm going to talk about is happened in Cotopaxi, Colorado. That is near Salida, Colorado, which is the central part of Colorado. It happened to a 24-year-old gentleman. Um, his name was Colin. Colin was a logger um, in the area and he lived in a trailer. Colin did inform um, local authorities that there were bear activity in his area. Well, when he did end up showing up to work, um, they came over to the trailer and th this is what they found. They found parts of his body inside his trailer and other parts scattered 30 yards from his trailer. They say that the main attack happened inside the trailer and then the bear came back to feed on his body um, over a couple of days. There are evidence that he has fought back um, with the bear and he had a gun on him and he fired it. This happened in 1993 and uh, the last killing of a man in Colorado was in 1971. The second story I'm gonna talk about is about a woman who was 74 years old and uh, she considered the black bears that came by her house to be her pets and she would feed them dog food and scraps. She fed them by poking the food through a metal fence that she built around her porch, which attracted many bears in that neighborhood, sometimes counting up to 14 bears on her property at one time. Well, again in August of 2009, um, one of them killed her. Um, they slashed her head through the fence and then dragged her body underneath it. Evidence showed that she bled quickly from the deep slashes to her neck and her head. Um, they did get a bear and they did kill a bear. It was 394 pound male um, who was found eating her body when they arrived on the property. In both cases, uh, the bears were shot and killed. Uh, there are other stories that I could just go on forever and you can research online if you will, if you like. There have been bear attacks, but uh, these were the, the main f fatal bear attacks that have happened. Um, and I say recently, one is in 2009 and the other one is 1993. I really like to be able to avoid having bears killed. I do understand that there are some bad bears, you know, there's some bad humans out here too, you know, and um, not every bear is a good bear. And like again, not every human is a good human either. And uh, we just need to be prepared for the worst just in case. I felt that I needed to tell you guys these, these stories so that you knew that a bear is just not little a nice little cuddly animal that you just make a lot of noises and they'll run away because that doesn't always happen. And we got to do what we can as, as humans just to not attract bears in our area, not to have them familiar with us, not to see us as, as not only food but food providers. Um, and to be able to inhabit the same type of areas and, and coexist in, in one area. Um, again, I, I'm not trying to scare you. I just wanted to let you guys know that, um, you know, some of the behaviors of bears and what black bears are about to, to make sure that you have the knowledge when you go into the back country. 
So if you've made it all the way through the end of this video, I want to thank you so much for watching. And now you're one step closer to learning a little bit more about the black bears. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.